let's talk about video gear because it can get out of control real quick. The last thing you need when you're on a deadline is to be scrambling around trying to find some piece of gear. How does this stuff just disappear? Like, where does it even go? And so in this video, I'm gonna show you six ways to keep your video gear organized and your sanity intact. Tip number one is to use these wall hangers for your grip equipment. These wall hangers are actually meant for hanging guitars, but I saw them and was like, no, nah, you have a bigger purpose in life, which is to hold my tripods and light stands. This setup makes it easy for us to grab whatever sticks we need at the moment, and it also prevents the legs from banging into each other and causing dents that could keep them from sliding up and down right. And I know that this is a problem that can happen thanks to the TSA. And my favorite part of this setup is how cheap these wall hooks are. You can get a six pack for only 12 bucks on Amazon. By the way, the links to these and all the products that I mentioned in this video are down in the description below. Tip number two is to store your gear in small compartments. I know this seems obvious, but a common mistake is to store your gear in drawers or boxes that are way too big and that makes it so easy for all your stuff to get mixed up. It's much better to store your gear in low compartments like these boxes that we got from Ikea for eight bucks because there's only so far that a piece of gear can wander in one of those. You also don't want to stuff boxes or drawers to the brim because you want some room to be able to move stuff around so you can find what you need. You don't want to be facing some Tetris puzzle every time you need to get that lid back on the box. And for those really tiny pieces of gear, you know, the ones that like to wander off everywhere, a cheap hack is to use a case that's meant for eyeglasses because they're easy to open, close, and whip out from your pocket during shoots. You can also use clear plastic cups or old medicine bottles if you wanna store tiny things in a really cheap and earth-friendly way. Tip number three is to label everything. Y'all, I bought this pack of labels from Office Depot over a decade ago. They couldn't have cost me more than 20 bucks, but it's crazy how many I still have left, especially because every one of my boxes in my office has one of these labels. And the nice thing is if I need to rename a box, I can just slap a new label on top of the old one as my gear changes. And what's really nice for labeling electronics is to use a whiteout pen. We use a whiteout pen to label all of our hard drives and a whiteout pen is especially clutch for making sure that all those charging cables don't become mysterious strangers. Tip number four is to avoid hot messes like this by using cable ties like these. These ties from Monster Magnetics are cool because they have these little magnets on the ends that make it really easy to get them on and off. Plus they come in handy for attaching your gear together in some weird ways, but you can't adjust the length of them very precisely and so that can be an issue. That's why we end up using these Velcro ties the most and they're a lot cheaper anyway. Or there's always the OG cable tie, the rubber band, but just keep in mind that after a few years it can melt and oh, that is really nasty. Tip number five is to pre-pack your bags in ready to use gear kits. Now, obviously, if your gear setup is completely different for every shoot that you do, then this is not a strategy that's gonna work, but if you can swing it, it's really nice to keep your gear stored in the bags that you're gonna take with you on shoots. So here we've got an audio kit, a camera kit, another camera kit, our gimbal stuff, our drone gear, and these bags stay packed or close to packed so that we can grab them and go whenever we have shoot days. One tip here is that you wanna store these bags on shelves that have a smooth surface, like this set of shelves we got from Home Depot for 20 <laughs> bucks, because if you put bags on a graded shelf, then the straps are gonna get caught and it's just not a cute situation. Tip number six is to have a dedicated battery charging station. Having a power strip like this, where you can charge all your batteries in one place, that is like luxury living for a filmmaker because without this, you're gonna have to spread all your battery chargers out throughout your house, wherever you can find an available outlet. Instead, we use this power strip from Belkin that costs 35 bucks, and it even has holes so you can mount it to the wall if you wanna save space. And the best part is that when shoot day comes around, you're not gonna forget that random battery that's charging in the bathroom. All right, y'all, those are all the organizing tips that I have for you in this video. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like. It's free to just click that little thumbs up button down there and then leave a comment. Let me know if you have any other hacks for organizing your gear that we should know about, holler below. 
My partner and I had a lot of fun making this video. We documented the planning of it, the scripting of it, the filming of it, the editing of it, all as part of this course that I'm making that teaches you how to make videos. And if you've been watching this channel, then you might be like, girl, you've been talking about working on that course for a minute now. I know, I feel like there's a lot of people who sell courses who like don't put very much time into making the course, but like a ton of time into marketing and I'm doing it flip because I really want to sell something valuable. It, it's taken longer than I expected, but it's not because we haven't been focusing on it. It's been all we've been working on. There's a lot of progress being made behind the scenes. There are six main sections to the course and we have just started the sixth and final section. So like the finish line, I can see it now, but because it's taken so long, we are releasing a little part of the course that focuses just on lighting. So here's a little bit about that if you're interested. Today I'm talking to the folks who don't have a clue when it comes to lighting a video, but who are also really impatient. I see you. This is the most efficient lighting lesson ever. I'm gonna be going over the four most popular types of lights, how to use them, when to use them, what their pros and cons are. I'm gonna be showing you how I took my lighting from this Yikes. to this. Yes. I'm giving you cheat sheets, step-by-step -step behind the scenes, a curated buying guide, a demo on a tiny dinosaur. Could you learn all this stuff on YouTube? Yeah, probably. But could you also waste a lot of time doing it? Yeah. Or you could just watch my lesson that I have obsessively scripted and revised for way too long so that you can learn what you need as quickly as possible because I know you have a life to live. I'm Mary Betsy and this is the most efficient lighting lesson ever available now at my website at marybetsy.com. So yeah, that lighting lesson is available right now at my website. I've got a link down below if you're interested. And if you are not interested at all in buying any courses from me, then that's cool. Hi, let's hang out anyways. After I finish the course, I will be releasing videos on this channel every single week for free. And I'm super, super excited about that. I hope that you are too. And I hope that you're doing well as this crazy, crazy year wraps up. Thank you so much for watching this to the end and I will see y'all later. Bye y'all.